Welcome back to Top Dog Tips. Thanks for joining us for this video on whether or not your dog can be a blood donor. You can also check out our extensive article on this subject on our website at topdogtips.com. Can dogs be blood donors? There are many ways to help dogs in need from voluntary work, shelter adoption, feeding strays, but have you ever thought of donating blood? No, not yours, but your dogs. The demand for canine blood has been increasing for the past 20 years with all the technological advancements in veterinary medicine. However, the supply hasn't been able to keep up. The supply has constantly declined and was further aggravated when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020. But now that we're in the clear, hopefully, can dogs be blood donors again and is it safe now? If you're planning to bring Fido along on your philanthropic journey of extending the lives of those in need, not by money, but by something precious, this is the video for you. In this video, we'll cover the basics of canine blood donation, the process that dogs have to go through, and the benefits it can give you and your pet. So let's get to it. The short answer to this question is yes, dogs can be blood donors. Little bit of trivia for you, the first ever successful blood donation and transfusion was not from human to human, but from dog to dog. It was performed by physician Richard Lauer and happened in 1665 in England. That's pretty cool, right? However, not all dogs can be blood donors. Veterinarians consider several factors before giving the go signal to someone who wants to get their dog into donating blood. Your dog's weight is a deciding factor as to which type of blood donation program he would best fit into, the full pint or the half pint program. But before I dive into that, let's address first the most sensible question any dog dog owner should ask. Is it safe for my dog to donate blood? The answer is yes. It's perfectly safe for your dog to donate blood. It's even beneficial for them and for you too. It's nothing unusual if your dog feels tired or nauseous afterwards, just like you would after donating blood. It's also normal to see minor swelling or a bit of soreness around the site. Those should go down after a few days. Also, part of the donation process is monitoring your dog afterward so the vets know that your dog's in a good place before they let him go. There have been zero reports of serious complications from canine blood donation. No special post-donation care is needed except for a little bit of extra rest. Your dog should be able to resume his normal routine the next day after donating blood. We know it's safe, but is it painful? It may sting a little, as you would imagine. If you've ever given blood yourself, you know what that little prick in the beginning feels like, but it's nothing that our dogs can't handle especially if they're used to going to the vet. Also, most programs use local anesthetic cream to numb or minimize the sensation on the extraction site. Now let's talk about the benefits of donating blood. Different animal blood centers feature different benefits that they give blood donors. Some give treats or pounds of dog food. Others give toys, accessories, memorabilia that brand your dog as a blood superhero, quote unquote. They also provide free health services that are otherwise costly if you had them done at a regular vet checkup. Things like vaccinations, preventative medications, a full annual physical exam sometimes, complete blood work, including screening and typing, could be done free of charge. This means you won't have to shell out a single dollar to have your dog's health thoroughly checked. Some donors also receive reimbursement for future care or a lifetime of free blood transfusion if needed. When it comes to your dog, free checkups, free stuff, and possibly free health services in the future, what's not to like about that? But in my opinion, the most important benefit is knowing that you and your dog can save lives, up to three dogs' lives to be exact. Let's talk about the requirements for canine blood donation. As I mentioned, not all dogs can pass as blood donors. Just like people, some people can't give blood, some dogs dogs aren't going to be able to give blood. While different blood donation programs have their own set of requirements to screen, here are the qualifications that most places look for in the perfect dog blood donor. Generally in good health, between one and nine years old, the dog weighs at least 25 pounds to over 50 pounds as long as they're not overweight. They have up-to-date vaccinations, including distemper, parvovirus, parainfluenza, hepatitis, and rabies. They're not on any medication except for flea, tick, and heartworm preventatives. They haven't had any treatment or blood transfusion within a certain period of time. That's gonna be different depending on the clinic that you go to, but typically they have a certain length of time that they're looking for your dog to not have had any treatments or blood transfusions. For female dogs, some programs require no history of pregnancy, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Apart from their physical health, your dog should also have a good temperament. He should be friendly, calm and confident, obedient, able to lie down for five to 10 minutes, and excited to meet new people and pets. 
If you're thinking of having your dog donate blood, contact your veterinarian to find the best program or the nearest blood donation center to help you get started. Now let's go through the step-by-step -step process. This depends on the center or program you're signing up for, but for the most part, it'll take days before your dog can donate his blood. Let's break down the whole process. First, signing up. Assuming that you've done your research and have vetted the best program or center for your dog, the first thing to do is sign up. You can visit the physical location, but the most convenient way is to check out their website and register there. The next step is going to be a meet and greet. After signing up, someone from the program or center should contact you to set up a meet and greet. Here, not only will your dog get to familiarize himself with the new place and people, but he'll also undergo additional screening to see if he's fit to donate blood. They'll check if your dog is too anxious, too excited, or just obedient enough to be the perfect blood donor. Your dog will also undergo an annual physical exam and he'll have a small sample of blood drawn for further screening and typing. They'll test the blood for possible bloodborne diseases like Lyme disease, brucellosis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and any other diseases that they may need to test for at that time. If any of these are present in your dog's blood, sadly, he's not going to be considered fit to donate. This is crucial for the blood donation program and for you because this is where you'll ultimately know if your dog is as healthy as a horse or if there's an underlying condition that you weren't aware of. You'll also get to know his blood type Yes, just like humans, dogs have blood types. I will talk more about that in just a few minutes. Some programs also offer vaccinations. So at this time, if they do offer it, they can also give updated vaccines to get your dog up to speed before the donation. The next step is going to be the actual canine blood donation. If your dog passes the screening and is deemed fit, you'll be called back to the center to have his blood drawn. This only takes a few minutes and you'll be able to be there with your dog the entire time to comfort him. After another set of standard health checks, your dog will be prepared for donation. The extraction site is often at the large jugular vein, but some still do it at the cephalic vein in the forearm. The area will be sanitized and shaved when necessary. Some centers also apply a local anesthetic cream at this time to minimize any discomfort that your dog may feel. And this can be especially true if it's his first time donating blood. While most dogs won't require it, any overly excited dogs might need to be lightly sedated to make the blood extraction seamless. Approximately 400 to 450 milliliters of blood are drawn out per donation, which takes about five to 10 minutes depending on your dog's circulation. The final step is aftercare. After the procedure, the needle wound will be wrapped up and your dog will be given all the love and belly rubs that he deserves for being a superhero, plus some goodies too. No special care is necessary, as I said, after a blood donation, except for a little extra rest. If necessary, some centers will hook your dog up for an IV fluid to help rehydrate them and replace the blood loss. Now that your dog's donated blood, what happens to that donated canine blood? A donated whole blood, which is blood that's complete with red and white cells, platelets, and plasma only lasts for about 28 days. This is why most collected blood is processed using a centrifuge to separate its different components into two, the red blood cells and the plasma. Once mixed with a nutrient solution, red blood cells have an extended shelf life of 42 days, while the plasma can be frozen fresh and last for years. Also, the most common canine blood transfusions only require either red blood cells or plasma. Now we know that our dogs can donate blood and we know the process that they would need to go through in order to donate blood. But what about cases where dogs need blood donation? While blood transfusion is mostly needed in emergency cases, other long-term diseases also benefit from this treatment. If you know of a friend's dog having one of the following conditions, among some others, you and your canine donor might help to save their life. Some of these cases are anemia, cancer-related blood loss, bone marrow disease, internal bleeding, parvo, inherited bleeding disorders, and hemophilia. Did you know that dogs have blood types? As I mentioned earlier, just like humans, dogs do have blood types, but instead of type, it's more classified as a group. Currently, there are more than 12 blood groups identified in dogs. Is this important to know? As a matter of fact, yes it is, especially in cases of emergencies. Just like in humans, certain blood types in dogs are not compatible and might cause great problems when accidentally mixed through transfusion. Dog breeds that are usually DEA 1.1 positive are golden retrievers and Labradors, while boxers, German Shepherds, Dobermans, and pit bulls, for example, are mostly DEA 1.1 negative. Dogs that only have a DEA4 blood type are considered universal donors. Long story short, yes, your dog can be a blood donor. Canine blood donation is nothing new, yet it's still widely necessary to save lives and to support more studies and research in veterinary medicine. Be a blood superhero. Have you and your dog had experience donating blood already? How did it go? Let me know in the comments below. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family, and fellow pet owners. If you liked this video, you can also subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all the tips and tricks that we share for pet parents and pet lovers. You can also subscribe to our email newsletter for daily tips and tricks in raising healthy, happy dogs. Thanks for watching.